are the waters of that Bohemian river, which pour from mountain forests into Prague, watching with light the rigid stones where men have forged their nation and its story. She saw the men of Prague when first they came out of the east to search new fields for pasture. She saw them raise their children on her backs. She washed their wounds and bore their dead away. These were the Czechs. They planned and built this town linked it with bridges and piled high the walls, and fought a thousand battles to defend their city's freedom and their pride as men. Until at last, safe in their fortress walls, they cleansed their hands of blood, and with their swords carved peaceful angels and steep flights of stone, climbing on steps of granite to their god, to sing and ring their bells among the clouds. And here their spirits flowered. They rejoiced in monuments upraised by reverent hands, in spires and towers which their exaltation flung to the skies that all might see their faith in stone and in the heavens twice reflected. Not only friendly spirits guard the city, stone devils, imps and vampires grin from the lofty roofs, and stone cocks crow with petrified alarm. Here from the high cathedral we can see Prague like a patterned carpet spread beneath us. And yet through generations of oppression only the privileged enjoyed that view. The nobles walked alone in these high gardens shutting the doors against the common people whose fathers built this sculptured paradise. Yet all these kings have died and Prague remains. The tyrants come and go and still the people return from age to age to their own right and open wide again the cloistered walls to claim the beauty none can hide forever. into the old town, which is only theirs, among the old walls where their mothers bore them. Between the houses where their children run, playing old games which outlive all invaders. Still the river passes like a friend, wise with the ancient struggles of the past, sharing the work and labor of the women and carrying boats like children on her back. The old town lives. Her streets are loud with all the bustle of the living, with all the market's agitation, where housewives endlessly parade, seeking the next meal or the perfect bargain. And in the marketplace, beneath each coloured tent, are piled rich stores of every merchandise. And here the crowds come early, and the bargaining begins. The smells of food and coffee untie the purse strings, and the old songs are heard. Here come the old wives with their brooms. Here come the maidens grinning, oh. Here come the fiddles and the drums, the market's just beginning, oh. We'll pick some apples or some pears. We'll choose a ripe cucumber, oh. And haggle if they be too dear from doomsday to December, oh. Who wants sausage from my stall? Who wants a pig's foot jelly, oh? Whatever kingdoms rise or fall, you've got to feed your belly, oh. Then gather round. We'll do you well. We'll keep the prices even, oh. And if the rich all go to hell, then we'll all go to heaven, oh. Above the heads of the people spread the stained glass skies and gothic branches where the cathedral stands, echoing the songs and chatter of a thousand such assemblies. 
and every hour the people raise their eyes to gaze upon the old clock's gilded face. To see Christ cast his blessing on the town. And time and death and Judas nod their heads, condemning all things mortal, beauty, sin, and tyranny and greed to common graves. Now mounted on the Czechoslovak lion, ride out to future worlds of steel and power, the fine-cut gleaming concrete walls of glass and soaring flats as clean and white as clouds, and churches built as simple as a prayer and all the austere passion of an age, free from the coils and fancies of the past. This was the modern city, Prague. The Czechoslovaks flooded it with light. The young grew strong and healthy in its air. Past the statue of St. Wenceslas, through boulevards as open as the sky, the modern age moved swiftly on its wings. together, a high roof spans the new town and the old. And on this ancient wall, which now has seen invasions ebb and flow a hundred times, hang these two sculptured symbols. Day, which illumines the past and will return. And night the present shadow of the conqueror hung like a plague above the silent streets. Black night is everywhere in Europe now. Yet though beneath these roofs the Czechs are lying, they do not sleep, but guard their stubborn courage, planning the morning and the new revolt to beat the Nazis back to their own darkness. Fascists' aggressors look with admiration over the roofs and bridges of this city, but do not boast. Prague has seen many like you. Her people's vengeance smashed them without pity. Her river swept their corpses to the sea. 